Hello my peeps, this is a video about percents, decimals, and fractions. I will be your host, Mr. Shirley, and yes, I would like you to make a note as you're watching this video. Remember, you can pause at any time you need to. It also might be a little bit helpful to go back and review converting between decimals and fractions. We do a little bit of that with this subject. All right, so make sure you put a date and a title on your note and you don't have to write down the learning goal. I'm just gonna read it. Uh, but the learning goal is to express numbers in percents, decimals, and fractions and convert between them. All right, so just a definitional thing. Percent literally means out of 100. So 16 out of 100 equals 16%. Okay, so in effect, this is sort of like the rates that we were doing last week. So anytime you've got 100 as the denominator, you can just take the numerator and that's the percent. Okay, so converting from decimals to percents, the method is quite simple. You multiply by 100. That's it. Not too tricky. Now, uh, hopefully you remember a little bit of when we did some of this in the past. So there's a few methods you can use. You could simply multiply by 100, but if you happen to not have a calculator with you, uh, keep in mind that that's the same effect as moving the decimal place two spots to the right. Okay, so because we've got two zeros, one, two, we move the decimal place two spaces to the right. Okay, and that gets us 25%. Um, so multiply 100, 25%. And yes, you'll see the patterns in this, and this will become faster and faster as you do it. Be careful with some of the numbers, so 0 0.02, remember you're still multiplying by 100, uh, but you have 2%, okay, not 20%. The two are different things, okay. I'm just, I, I know this may be uh, unnecessary, but I'm just going to quickly write this down. This would be 20%, okay, 0 decimal 2, so that times 100 would equal 20%. Again, forgive my very poor writing, um, but you get the idea, okay? So 0 0.02 would be 2%, 0 0.2 would be 20%, so big difference there. Now, when you get um, numbers that are bigger than one, you still do exactly the same thing. So you multiply by 100, you move that decimal place two spots over, and you end up with 311%. So yes, you can have percents higher than 100, happens all the time. Uh, so just, just be comfortable with it. All right, on to the next one. Fractions to percents, okay? Um, so the, the method you're wanting to use here is to convert to a decimal first and then multiply by 100. So hopefully you're quite comfortable and remember well on how to convert from a fraction to a decimal. It's fairly straightforward. I think I include it right in here. Uh, so what you do first is you just take your numerator divided by the denominator. Okay, so 11 divided by 15, and then you multiply by 100 just like before, and you get 73.3%. Now there's a little bit of rounding there, so with some of these questions right here with the fractions to percents, you may need to round your answer, pick something reasonable, do not write all the digits or anything like that, and feel free to use bar notation if you'd like. That would be a little more precise than rounding, but I'll leave that up to you. Okay, second one. So three divided by seven will equal something something weird, and then multiply that by 100, and you would end up with 42.9%. Again, that's probably rounded. Now, please take a moment and try out the last one and see how you do. Pause the video, give it a go. Great job, I'll assume you got perfect on that question, but we'll go over it anyways, just to be sure. Okay, so you do the same thing, five divided by four, okay, times 100, and you will end up with 125%. Okay, so just as a way of error checking your numbers, if you have the numerator smaller than the denominator, so these two, for example, the top is smaller than the bottom, your percent in the end will be smaller than 100, okay? When you have the numerator bigger, like this one, your percent in the end will be bigger than 100%. And if you happen to have a fraction that was equal on top and bottom, that would equal 100% exactly. 
It doesn't come up that often because it's a little bit of a silly question. But just for error checking to make sure your answer is reasonable, just keep an eye on it and compare it to that to see whether you should be above or below 100%. All right, on we go. Now, percents to decimals, fairly straightforward, just doing the opposite of what we did before. So divide by 100. Okay, so again, you can simply divide by 100, punch that into a calculator, however you'd like to do it. Uh, or if you're without one, you can just move the decimal place two to the left. Again, the opposite of what you would be doing to multiply by 100 because dividing and multiplying are opposites from each other. Uh, so move that decimal place two to the left and you end up with 0 0.79, okay? When you have a number that's bigger than 100%, you still move it only two spots to the left, so you end up with 2.23, okay? Again, if you have a, a percent that is bigger than 100, which 223 is certainly bigger than 100, you should end up with a number other than 0 in front of the decimal, okay? Uh, as we talked about much earlier in the year, Technically, you don't have to put the zero in front of the decimal, but I really encourage you to do that. It makes it less likely you'll miss the decimal point and think that number is 79 or something like that. Please put in that zero. It's a lot easier to understand. A lot less troubles can come from that. All right, and then on to our last one is uh, converting from percents to fractions. Okay, this one takes a little bit longer, but it's still not too bad. So express with a denominator of 100 and then reduce it to lowest terms. All right, so first step, express with a denominator of 100. Okay, so no matter what it is, denominator of 100, and express just means write it that way. Okay, so take your 24, put it above the 100, and then reduce to lowest terms, and this certainly can, and if you reduce that down to lowest terms, you get six over 25. Yes, I know we're bringing fraction and ratio stuff right back in here, but they're all connected, so. It's quite logical that we do that. All right, on we go. 73%, um, so that's just 73 over 100, and you can't reduce that to lowest terms. Yay, very exciting. So we don't have to do anything with that. Now, when you get a number that's bigger than 100, you still do the same thing, okay? You still put it over 100, but again, like we talked about before, that um, you have to just be careful when you're numerator is bigger than your denominator because you should end up with a fraction as, as you keep going down make sure your fraction stays that way okay so that can reduce to three over two or to one and one half if you really like mixed fractions okay so again just be careful that you're watching your answer so that it makes sense you don't lose the one here somehow or uh, inadvertently end up making your numerator smaller than your denominator just because you think it should be that way Okay, if you're bigger than 100%, your numerator is bigger unless you turn it into a mixed fraction. Okay, so try out the homework that I sent home. Please ask many questions if you have them during our meetings or by email or whatever other method you prefer, and uh, I will help with any questions. Thanks very much for watching. Have a good day.